So Bitcoin is above 65K and alts have been ripping all week. So you're probably feeling a lot of FOMO, even if you are in some trading positions and in some spot, you're kind of wishing that you were more exposed. But in this video, I'm going to be going over why now isn't the time to be FOMOing in and jumping in and why it's best to wait for a pullback and go over some examples of some potential pullback scenarios we could see over the coming week or so. So let's get into it. Now, as always, we will start with Bitcoin and Ethereum and go over a couple of the majors as well, such as Bitcoin dominance, ETH BTC, and then the total two and three chart as well, just to give you a picture of what is going on. And then we'll go into some altcoin scenarios as well. Um, so I'm going to cover ADA, DOT, FTM, Gala, VeChain, Soul, and Dog with Hat as well to so show you some potential pullback scenarios and how to identify key levels which we could come back and hit and give you a much better entry than if you were to FOMO in today. So let's start with, as I say, BTC on the higher time frames on the weekly. And as you can see, we are above that key weekly level of 64K. So previous swing highs, as I've talked about in previous videos from back on the 19th, the week of the 19th and week of the 26th of August. Above those is where we got slightly rejected last week. But as you can see, above that and we should have a decent weekly close above 64k of course still got a few days to go uh, unless we get a, a horrendous weekend and if we do end up turning this into a wick and get a bearish close below 64k that would probably indicate a deeper pullback into around 65 9k which obviously is something you want to um, be wary of it could happen definitely not off the cards but yeah something to watch out for but at the moment all looking okay if we go on to the daily time frame Again, we've got these two big levels of resistance. Now, one of them we've cleared, which was 64K, which was the same level as on the weekly time frame. But on the daily time frame, we've got this other level here at about 65.4K, which we're struggling to get over at the moment. Whipped it yesterday and we've whipped above it today, but yet we're back underneath it or right on it as I'm recording the video. So obviously the US session is still to come. Um, I'm recording this around midday. So I don't know what's obviously going to happen during the US session. This could either blast off or reject horribly but at the moment we are right on that level of uh of, of basically decision time so you can clearly see this is a strong level of previous support and resistance all the way back from the 16th of july this year so big level here i think if we clear that then the next big level we've got um before all-time highs is this level up here about 68k you see previous uh swing high from back at the end of july and uh well slightly earlier in july as well so 22nd uh 26th 27th 28th 29th of july big resistance and it was also resistance back here uh in the 12th and 13th of june so clear this level of 65k and then you probably are going to want to uh jump in because we're probably going to have a quick move up 68k however as i say we have still got this level of resistance to contend with and we could see a pullback now what if we do pull back and take out all of these uh equal lows that we've got um back down here so in around 62 and a half k all of these wicks here what if we come down take all that liquidity retest the moving average 21 bounce off this daily and four hour fpgs that we've got down here either at 62.3 or 61.7 now if you don't know what fpgs are they're fair value gaps we've done youtube videos on them before but essentially if you go on to uh, indicators and type in fvg what will come up is you've got two you've got uh, one for nephew sam well you've got quite a few options but the one uh, the best one to use is this nephew sam one which will come up you can see it's got the most users and essentially that is the indicator i've got on here it's currently hidden but if you turn it on you can see the fbgs coming up on whatever time frame you like obviously you can go into the settings and change which time frames you would like to see on which time frames etc but uh, on the daily this is what it currently looks like and obviously if you go down into the four hour you get a lot more um fbgs obviously the lower the time frame you go the weaker the uh, fbgs are obviously the higher time frames are going to be stronger like any kind of support and resistance but that's what they're basically used for they show where there's been an imbalance between buyers and sellers and where price is likely to come back and feel kind of like a cme gap um but yeah on the depending on what time frame you're on obviously the lower time frames are a little less reliable whereas the higher time frames have a much stronger reaction very good to use in confluence with other things um and used as a level as, as levels of support and resistance 
as well. So as I say, back to the daily time frame, we've got these daily and four hour FVGs back down here about 62.3 and 61.7. What if we come down, take all, take out all those lows, bounce off here and the moving average 21 as well. Not only is the moving average of 21 a really good uh, trend tool to see what direction the market's trending or if it's not trending. So if the moving average is just dead sideways, then you know you're not in a trending environment, you're in a range bound environment, but also can be used as an indicator for when prices are getting a little bit overextended. So you can see in all these big moves, the price eventually snaps back towards the moving average 21 it has a little retest there. it's a nice clean example here back on the 1st of july price has been trending below the moving average 21 for a long time it finally gets to a point where it goes sideways for a little bit comes up retests the moving average 21 and then rejects again same here um, back on the 5th of august had that mega dump zip back up to the moving average 21 and then stayed below it retesting it day after day after day until it finally broke above it so it's not perfect obviously um but it is a really good tool to get you to the chart and say well hang on things are getting a little bit overextended here we probably even if it just means you chop sideways for a bit like what we saw back here in february of this year big move up big extension then we chopped sideways for a little while until the moving average caught up and then we went again and again there's a nice little retest the moving average going on here back on the 5th of march so just one of those things that you can uh, use to sort of say well things might get a little bit overextended here i might wait for a pullback and if it gets in and around the moving average 21 that's usually a nice bounce area let's go and take a look at ethereum it's a little bit of a messier chart on the weekly you've got a weekly fvg coming up here at about 2724 with a daily fvg as well so this is what it looks like when the uh, tool is turned on and what i do is i then mark them out um, with just a horizontal line and then i hide the indicator so it just makes the chart a lot cleaner so with ethereum currently up against a daily and four hour feg as i say at about 2663 we've had a real tough time trying to get above this as you can see so again a little bit of word of caution there or something to make you think well maybe we are a little bit overextended gonna have a little pullback and again what if we come down take out all these lows that we built up between the 21st and 26th of september come down retest these daily and four hour fegs one at 2530 one at around 2500 and it's also where the moving average 21 is as well so i'm not saying this is definitely going to happen or a guarantee but it's something to consider that if we are going to have a pullback, this is obviously going to give you a much better risk reward entry than if you FOMO in here. Uh, let's take a look at the other majors. As I said, uh, uh, let's go Bitcoin dominance on the monthly, as we talked about on Monday, looking pretty good. It's come down a fair bit. It's created a bit of a wick, potentially turning a little bit bearish. We've obviously only got three days of the monthly time uh, frame to go. So we've got a monthly and a weekly candle close, I believe, on Sunday um so yeah see how this goes if this ends up rolling over and getting a close back below 57 percent, i think that is very bullish for altcoins bearish for bitcoin dominance and we could see a little bit of a rally eth btc as we've talked about as well on that nice support of 0 0.04 on that monthly level so clear previous resistance level back from all the way in september 2018 all the way to february 2012 in fact april 2021 when we finally broke above it so that is holding as a nice support so bitcoin dominance at resistance each btc at support and to add to that the total two and total three chart pretty much the same chart again as we talked about get rid of that as we talked about on monday but they're both doing the same thing we're coming up to a big level of weekly resistance we'll just look at the total two because as i say the total three as you can see is pretty much identical so the total two um coming up to a big level of previous resistance hoping to break it so you can see we failed here at this point back on the 19th of august i warned about that in a youtube video we did talked about the fact that we're retesting the moving average 21 um we're obviously below it below this 940 billion level which has been a clear level of support and resistance in the past and we did reject and now we're back up here and also we rejected from the uh, the rsi 50 as well so we're replicating that move again however looking a lot stronger this time we're currently above both the moving average 21 and the weekly level 940 billion the rsi is creeping above uh, the 50 percent mark as well so if we get a decent weekly close you know up and above 940 950 billion anywhere sort of a trillion and up would look really good and start turn that moving average up and we could start trending up which would be a very nice uh, indicator for 
altcoins. Let's move on then to the altcoins themselves and, and take a look at some potential pullback scenarios. As I say, rather than FOMOing in here at potential levels of resistance before a potential pullback, as I keep saying, we might not pull back. Maybe we just carry on ripping. However, much better to wait for a pullback and get that better R and R entry than uh, FOMOing in and uh, you know suffering big losses. So ADA, as you can see, a potential level resistance here. The RSI 50 and the moving average 21. If we go down to the daily, we've cleared this daily level resistance about 39 and a half cents. So that in itself could be a nice little pullback level. However, what if we pull back deeper, you can see how far away the moving average 21 is. It's all the way back down at 36 cents. And we've got these two daily and uh, four hour FEGs, one at 37.8 cents, one at 36.6 cents. As you can see, nice little FEG box there. So what if we come down and test one or both of those levels? If we take a look, from the peak that we've had this morning, um, that would be 9% to the first one and 12% to the next one. From current price, as I'm recording it, it would be uh, about six, but five, six percent down to the first FEG and 9% down to the bottom one. And as you can see, the daily moving average 21, give it another day or two, is going to be in and around these two daily FEGs. So as I say, if we do see a pullback going into the, the going into the weekend or the start of next week, maybe of course we put in. Um, we have a pullback at the beginning of October, which is, of course, next week. I think the first is on Tuesday. So what if we go in and put the monthly lows in during the first week? Bit of a pullback, scare everyone because everyone's thinking that it's going to be October and up only. Put in a nice dirty wick at the beginning of the month and then continue uh, and resume. Shake people out, clear out leverage and then go again. It's definitely in the realm of possibility. So as I say for ADA, Shallow pullback levels, 39 and a half cents. Deeper pullback levels, 37 and a half and 36 and a half cents. Dot performing quite well finally after uh, months and months of, of lack of performance. If we take a look at the weekly time frame again at a weekly FEG, uh, so resistance there. If we go down to the daily, you can see having a bit of a rejection off that level. So, what if we come back down and retest these FVGs down here? So, we've got the top of the FBG at $4.58 and the bottom of it at $4.59. And again, you can see the moving average 21 right on that bottom uh, of the daily FBG. So give it another couple of days. It's going to be up at that top level of the or the top of the FBG, which actually lines up with this swing high here on the 15th of September. So that looks like a really nice pullback level. If we go from to top of today's wick to in and around that level, you're looking at about 8% pullback from current prices about 7% pullback. So it's not unreasonable at all to expect that kind of pullback should BTC and ETH have a correction. FTM, which has been absolutely flying over the past, uh, well, quite a few weeks actually, ever since the bottom on the 5th of August, it's been absolutely flying. However, once again, weekly FVG as resistance held last week, currently holding this week, another whiff above. In terms of the daily, again, we've got another daily FVG box um, below us right where the moving average 21 is so uh, 62.6 cents is the top of the box 58.9 cents or 59 cents call it is the bottom of that daily fvg and where the moving average 21 currently is so again if we go take a look at a pullback from yesterday's peak down to the top of that box a 15 percent pullback down to uh, the bottom of the box the bottom of the fvg is a 20 percent pullback from today's prices um, it is a pretty much 9% pullback to the top of the box and 14% pullback to the bottom of that FEG. And again, we've got these lows similar to what we've got on BTC and ETH, these equal lows that we've formed, these wicks, all the way through from 19th to the 24th of September. So if we come, what if we come down, take all those wicks out, hit the bottom of this daily FEG, hit the moving average 21, and then create a higher low and continue the trend. Much better entry than trying to uh, get in at a weekly level of resistance, in my opinion. Gala had a really good couple of days, broke this clear level of previous resistance here at 0.022. So again, in terms of a pullback, that would be a pretty nice pullback in itself. 11% from today's uh, highest point, about 8% from current uh, prices of recording. Or maybe slightly deeper, go back down to this daily FEG, retest that about 12% from here. And again, in a couple of days time, maybe about three, four days time, the moving average 21 is going to eventually catch up to, to that daily FEG there. And so that would be a nice entry if we do get that pullback. 
Couple more then, VeChain again up at a weekly level of resistance, both a weekly FG and the movement average 21. So would not be surprised to see a bit of a pullback. In terms of the daily time frame, we've got a, a daily FG here at 0 0.024 and then some slightly deeper ones here at 0 0.0235 and 0 0.0. Two, three. Now, in terms of the movement average 21, again, right on this daily and four hour FVG at 0 0.023. However, in a few more days, probably going to creep up to this next FVG here at 0 0.024. So, obviously, depending on what happens, uh, where price ends up, you could see uh, a pullback to either of these. This one looks the more likely one, 0 0.024, about 7%, 7.5% pullback from here. Um, as opposed to the deep pullback, which would be about 10%. So it's obviously all about keeping your eye on the charts, seeing where Bitcoin and Ethereum find their support, and then looking at alts and seeing where they're sat um, on their current levels as well. Finally, Solana and uh, one of the Solana meme coins, Dog Whip Hat. So if we take a look at Solana, no big um, heavy resistances. I suppose you could say that there's a resistance here at $158, $159, the top of these two candles from the 19th and 26th of August. And then you go into the daily, we've got a potential uh, to pull back into this daily FEG down here at about $145 where the moving average 21 is, or the daily FEG just below it at $141. So again, if we take a look at what that would be in terms of a pullback from the top of today's prices, about 9% pullback from current prices, about 7.5%, which doesn't sound unreasonable at all. Pull back into that FVG, moving average 21, create a higher low and uh, continue that uptrend. And then finally, Dog Whiff Hat, which has been absolutely flying the past four or five days. It's up from the start of this week to now it is up about 40%, which is insane. So again, you're probably going to get a pullback at some point. We've got this clear level of previous daily resistance at $1.95 and it's around that $2 big round psychological level, which would be a nice, decent pullback. From current prices, that would be a 15% pullback. Uh, and from the peak of today's prices, about 20%. So not unreasonable to think that we get that kind of pullback. Moving average 21 currently sat on this daily FVG about $1.80. Although, of course, in a few more days time, that's going to keep rising up high and probably going to meet up with this daily level and daily 4-hour FVG at around $1.95. So again, that would be a nice pullback level of support and then of course you've got that not only have you got this level as invalidation you've also got the movement average 21 as well so with all of these pullbacks if we get them of course you've got those levels of invalidation either the levels of support either the fbgs which are also support and resistance or the moving average 21 as well so if you've got all of those uh indicators as confluence then the trading idea is stronger and likely more likely to work out because more people are seeing what you're seeing and more people um, are you know betting that the market is going to go that way. So drop in the comments what you think is going to happen over the weekend and the first week of October. Do you think we get a dip or do you think we're just going to keep going relentlessly all the way up to 70k and all coins are going to follow? Do you think all coins are going to outperform or do you think Bitcoin is going to steal the show once again? Let us know, uh, drop a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and I'll see you next week.